And of course, there are two entities there, the teeth themselves and the, the rest of the, the pink part of the denture. And I'm just soaking the whole thing to see if that might be a source of her carcinogen. There it is, very high. Uh, it's seeping polonium. And I'll look for cerium because cerium is used in dental plastic. You can find that right on the internet. Uh, it's terrible that a great deal of research on cerium was done in the first half century, in the last century already. Cerium came into use and they never did uh, search for an effect uh, that might be contributing to cancer, I suppose. Um, because I find it in every cancer case, it's part of the carcinogen causing the cancer. Part, so part of the I'm complex. Testing, yes. Part of the complex between the polonium yes. and cerium. Yes. The okay. carcinogen isn't a single entity. It's a oh. large complex. Uh -huh. and, the, and it starts with polonium, and that is complex to cerium. Yes. We would expect, this is cerium, we would expect it to be exuding it because it's if it hardened the plastic enough, it would not diffuse out. But that generally isn't done. It's only hardened for the sake of its physical um, durability and uh, instead of how much it diffuses out. And if you were to harden it the normal way by putting it in a pan of water and the cool water and letting it build up to the bubble point but not boil, would that uh, solidify the plastic sufficient yes. to keep the radiation from coming out? No, but it would keep <clears throat> the cerium from coming out. Uh -huh. Um, but it would not keep the polonium from having its action. So these dentures then must be replaced yes. with, with non-polluted yes. denture material. Yeah. The reason this got <clears throat> polluted is because they were using Clorox bleach in the dental supplies. And that's what I would test next. First let me see if the, if, if the polonium diffusing out and the cerium diffusing out are already complex. It takes only seconds for that to happen, just as though it was, say, hydrogen and oxygen or sodium and chlorine. If they came in contact with each other, they would react immediately. And it's, this goes very fast, too. There's the complex, complete, ready to form the complete carcinogen. Complete carcinogen, you have to add the rest of the, uh, of the whole complex. And that comes from Clorox bleach too. The, the ferrocyanide would be found in the Clorox bleach. In the NSF bleach, which we always uh, consider the good bleach or the better bleach, has ferricyanide. It's also very harmful, of course. Any cyanide that you're eating that's, that isn't a plant, plant material, has to be detoxified by the body in a special way which is quite a drain on the body's resources. The body needs its resources to detoxify the natural uh, uh, cyanide-containing food. About half of our food has cyanide molecules in it, and that's why they're called cyanogens, but they're not toxic, whereas something that's human-made is much more likely to be toxic. And certainly these cyanides that are added to the water to keep the pipes from developing scale and from corroding uh, is very toxic. No matter what the literature says, uh, the literature goes back many years and maybe it just ought to be repeated. Uh, the experiments on these cyanides called ferricyanide and ferrocyanide were done a oh, hundred years ago already and they came to the conclusion that they were not very toxic. That doesn't mean enough. <clears throat> but if it's in your mouth, that's a whole different story. Yes. And if you're a cancer patient yes. that can't detoxify these yes, things, then you're exactly. really in trouble. Right. One of the mutations <clears throat> that this big carcinogen makes, besides the cancer mutations, is, uh, is that no rodanese will be made. That is one of the mutations that, the, that this mutagen, a carcinogen is a mutagen at the same time. A carcinogen that can cause cancer is also causing mutations, so that makes it a mut mutagen also. 
So here we will see whether the the entity from uh, Clorox bleach, which is ferrocyanide, this is potassium ferrocyanide, whether that is exuding from this denture and diffusing into the body. Yes, large amounts. So now you have the third item that is in the carcinogen. It forms a, a, a chain. Uh, these are the first three members. Uh, the next item is an alkylating agent um, derived from onions, garlic, mustard, and we have synthetic alkylating agents too that are used as chemotherapy because they are so deadly. But uh, ordinary onions, garlic, and mustard make them too. We're not meant to eat much of that, if any. <laughs> Now the literature will gloss over that and say you don't need to worry uh, that this might be coming from the mustard you're eating or the garlic. Th those things have their good uh, attributes too, but this is much more important and um, I think we should, be stop we should stop using those foods because we make these alkylating agents from them. And here are here are a few. Here's here's mustard. You wouldn't expect that from an inanimate thing, of course. The alkylating agent it doesn't come from the Clorox bleach. It comes mm -hmm. from the food you eat. Uh huh. Now I was confused. Was that positive or negative? I didn't listen. Negative. That was negative. Okay. Here is dialosulfide that. Uh, would come from onions, and you wouldn't expect that to come from uh, uh, a non-living thing. Here's uh, here's aloe, aloe alcohol, another okay. onion-like compound. There oh. are very many alkylating agents coming from these three kinds of foods, and they form oh. part of the carcinogen. It's the next part. Uh huh. So and you, and you you're checking. That. And you're checking an inanimate thing. The the dentures just. Yes. And you wouldn't normally check for that because you know it's not there because it's not right. a food item. Right. I but see. For yeah. sake of demonstration. <clears throat> right.